name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today, we see one of the greatest stories in the Bible. I know last week I told you it was one of the greatest stories with the prodigal son. I think last week was the greatest parable. This is my opinion, by the way. The lost son, the prodigal son last week, one of my favorite parables. And then today, what a great story about the woman at the well. This woman was coming to, to draw water from the well, but she was ashamed and guilty about her life. She was broken, empty person, coming to just to get water so she can cook or clean or take care of her life. She didn't want to meet anyone at the well, but she met someone at the well. She met the most important person in the entire universe, our Lord Jesus Christ. She was coming guilty, coming embarrassed, coming just shy. Just, she didn't want to meet anyone, but she met someone. She met the most important person that we need to meet also today. This woman was coming in darkness, but she met the light of the world. She was coming dry and thirsty, and she met the living water. This woman was coming sick, but she met the true physician, the real doctor. This woman was coming for love, and she met the lover of mankind. What an amazing day. What a turn of events for her life. She was just coming to get water. She was not coming for anything else. She was coming in darkness. She met the light. She was coming sick. She met the doctor. She was coming feeling no love, no acceptance. She met the lover of mankind. What a great turn of events. And maybe you came to the church today just to sit here and just to feel like you get a blessing in the church. But I want to tell you, you're going to meet the same one today in the church. The same one she met, you're going to meet him today too. Here's the thing. This lady came today not expecting to meet him, but she needed to meet him. She was coming today just as a normal day, around noon, around 12, just to get water, and she met the greatest person in the history. Now, you're probably coming today, and you're probably just as desperate like I am to meet our Lord Jesus Christ. We're all coming today to church, this beautiful church, to meet Him, to be lifted up by Him. You wouldn't come to church here for no reason. Don't say I'm coming just for routine, it's Sunday, no. You're coming just like I'm coming because we are desperate to meet Him. We're desperate to feel His love. We're desperate to be forgiven. We're desperate for this meeting that she had with Him. We are also desperate for the same meeting. <laughs> Amen. 
Here's the thing about our church, the Orthodox Church. We don't come to listen to the Bible to remember something that happened thousands of years ago. No. We come to the church to hear the Bible for something that will happen today in the church. Does that make sense? So whenever you hear the Bible being read, or you read it, remember, we don't believe that this is a remembrance of the Samaritan woman. This is us being the Samaritan woman, meeting Christ today in the church. That's why we're here. And that being said, he promised the Samaritan woman something, and he's promising us something today. And that's what I want to get into. As we get translation, open your Bibles to John chapter 4, verse 14. John 4, 14. He's coming today to promise us the same thing he promised her. John 4, 14. What is he promising us today? Let's go. John 4, 14 says, Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. What the Lord is promising us today is the fountain, number one, the Lord is promising us the fountain of water springing up. Now I want to explain what that means. Just because, well, that's too big to understand. What is the fountain of water springing up? Well, I want you to imagine a fountain. What's a fountain? You know what a fountain is, right? It's like a, a water fountain can, can come up like that. The water goes like that and it goes back down, right? But this one is different. This is a fountain of water springing up, 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 up. doesn't go back down. What does that mean? That means that inside of us, God wants to give us the living water that is taking us higher and higher and higher. Now you're probably asking yourself, what is this fountain of water? What is this living water springing up? Well, the fathers say the fountain of water is the Holy Spirit in us. Now what does that mean? What's the big deal? I know I have the Holy Spirit. You know you have the Holy Spirit. But what we don't know is that this, that inside of us, the Holy Spirit wants to give us love, wants to give us encouragement, wants to give us life, wants to give us encouragement. He's in us. What the Samaritan woman met today was God. And God, who is offering the fountain of living water inside, springing up, springing up, springing up. Now you came to church today, maybe disturbed by a problem. Maybe you came to church today challenged by a certain sin. Maybe you came to church today with hatred towards someone. God is saying to her, and saying to us, I want to give you this fountain of water springing up. It's something from the inside. You're receiving something today to strengthen the inside. So if it is the Holy Spirit, that means the Holy Spirit is ready to work inside of each one of us. And I'm going to explain something about that after the translation. <laughs> Here's the problem. You guys want to hear the problem? Is that this fountain inside of us can be turned on very low pressure. You ever had like water in your house when you take a shower and it's low pressure? I hate that. It happens all the time here. Low pressure. Low pressure like drops coming out. You're looking, can I, how can I take a shower with a drop coming on top of me? Sometimes we can make the Holy Spirit drops of water to the point where nothing is working in our life. 
how do we make this fountain pouring here's the thing in church today when you receive the holy communion you turn the fountain on high when you read the bible and you listen to the bible and you obey the bible you turn the fountain up high when you pray you turn the fountain on high. now what if tomorrow you don't do that you're turning the fountain pressure down and the next day you forgot to pray and read the bible and you didn't take communion again the following, you're turning the pressure down so you ask I, I feel lonely i feel broken i feel lost i feel hatred i feel ang- i feel sure i feel all these things you know why you feel that because maybe the fountain of living water inside of us is turned down he'll never go away but we can turn the fountain down so what i'm saying to you today i'm asking you god is coming to the church today to say hey i want you to turn that fountain up now here's the thing you ever heard of the word risky risky risk you know what risk is risk is taking a chance and you can lose big we can lose big brothers sisters we can lose big if we decide today to not be serious about holy communion to not be serious about repentance to not be serious about the bible we are risking we're risking our life spiritually to turn it down this woman who is one of the greatest sinners became one of the greatest missionaries you know her story saint fortini the greatest missionary they call her equal to the apostles equal to the apostles this this woman is is like in bad shape here right no because she decided to turn the fountain up inside of you is the fountain of living water springing up please don't turn it down don't be afraid to take holy communion don't be afraid to confess and repent don't be afraid to open the bible every single day we've been telling you that for years but it's about time we say this is risky i might be risking my life now if i don't turn this thing on full blast but imagine what your life would look like imagine with me what you would look like when the fountain is turned up on full blast i can imagine how each one of us would have Now, the next part is so important. Are you with me? How many are with me? Raise your hand. Raise two hands if you're not with me. Somebody raised two hands, so I don't know. Here, here we go. <laughs> Listen carefully. The next part is so important. Number one, God is offering this fountain of water springing up. But number two, this is the most important part. Pay attention. Now, look at verse 15. It's her response. The woman said to him, she said, so Jesus said, I'm going to give you this water to spring up this living water now look at her response verse 15 the woman said to him sir give me this water that i may not thirst so right here what did the woman do jesus promised something and she responded by saying okay i want that for my life give me that water god give me that water that springs up inside of me now the next verse is the most confusing verse but the most amazing verse if you can get verse 16 now verse 15 and 16 it looks like they're not related but they're related verse 15 she says give me the what give me this what sir give me this water sir give me this what did he say to her in verse 16 call your husband wait a minute wait 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 jesus 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 that's a good one but look i said i want the water you said the water i I want the water and he responded saying go call your why why did he do that why did he confuse the situation she he said i'm going to give you water she said okay i want the water he said go call your husband why is that 
related to the situation. Now, why did he say go call husband? Because imagine this, inside of this lady is this fountain, but it's, imagine water coming out, it's blocked. The fountain is blocked. Why? From the life situation with men. He said, go call your husband, meaning that's the sin that's blocking this water. He's basically saying, I want to give you this water, but this is blocking it. Now, he might not say to you today, he might not say to you, go call your husband. But you know what he might say to you today? Um, go get your phone. Go get my phone? Yeah, your phone. Why God? Why do you want my phone? Do you need to call someone? No. I want your phone because that's what's causing you to sin. You're always doing something on that phone that's causing you to sin. Go get your phone. He might say that to some of us. He might say, go get your family. Why God? you need to see my family? Jesus, you need to see my family? You have a family problem at home. Go get them. Let's solve that together. So whatever is blocking us, he's going to say, go get it for me and bring it to me. Now you're probably confused here. I just want living water. God wants to give us this living water. He wants us to, this water inside of us to spring up. But you know something? The fountain is blocked. The water pipe is blocked. So guess what? He's going to say, go get your TV. Maybe you watch too much TV. Maybe you watch bad movies. Go get your TV for me. Jesus, you want my TV? What do you want a TV for? Whatever it is that we are stuck in, whatever that's holding us, he might say, go get it. He might say, go get your car. Why my car, God? You need, I can take you wherever you want to take. I can take you wherever. Just tell me where you need to go. No, you're driving to places not good for you. Or you're always having fun every day, just going out for leisure all the time, all the time, all the time. He might say, go get some food. Go get food. You're hungry, God? Maybe we're eating too much. Maybe we're talking too much. I don't know what it is we're doing too much. But whatever it is that's not pleasing him, he's saying, go get it. Now today, when you're in the church, you're probably going to say, God, I want this living water to spring up. And he's going to say, I'm going to give it to you. But go get, you fill in the blank. What is it that's blocking the fountain of living water in your life? I don't know. You don't know? We got to discover today. But all I'm saying is this. Springing up, pouring inside of us, love, joy, peace. I want that healing inside of me. And I want that healing inside of you. I don't want to be broken. I don't want to be shattered. I don't want to be depressed. I don't want to be sad. I want us to have this joy springing up, springing up until we reach everlasting life, like verse 14 says. But verse 15 is important. You should ask God today, God, I need this living water. And his response is, go call your... I don't know what it is for you. But what is it for you? What is it? Go bring me a bottle that you're drinking. Go get me a cigarette you're smoking. Go get me your business. My business? What's wrong with my business? You love your business more than me. Go get it for me. What? My business? I have to let go of my business? My work? Go get your... Uh, Go get that? No, 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 God. I'm not going to give you any of those things. That's how I make my money. God wants us to go get whatever is blocking the fountain from springing up. So today when you pray, be ready to give up something that's higher than Him that's blocking the springing up inside of us. At the end of the day, you know why we're here today in church? Because we want something on the inside. We don't want something on the outside. We want something on the inside to be changed and to be lifted up. Let's pray for that today. Zosa, 
Letenda sita sisi tu kufine. Mfumo chuo sita chini tu, chama chini kuvala ni kumutenda zako ina kuni ina. Ambaye kuto kuto, afuna kifu, kipeleke, machimo ya kikuli ebe. Kata chini zote, manzi yamia ya 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 zako ina kumachimo ifu. Manzi yamia ya kuvali wakiti, ya sacho kama kumachimo ifu. Ya zaya makucho kama kumachimo ifu. Chukua chuo hiki, chuo sisi kama ifu, tili kuchita, pamoja ambaye kuto kuto, zako kuli ebe. Chimo chimo zina ujamii, muzima ya kusamari ya ujamii. Muzima ya kutamaria, ambi Yesu Christi, wanamu za kwaji, leta mamuna wako. Anakala oda hako. Chimo zimuwa zina ipi, takuwe na mchari itilero, nchari tamia ni kupemba, ambi ya ni dali seni, ambi ya ni pasi ya ni zote. Kwa mambi ya mungu wakamba kwaji, leta tamia ni kusukone za diwe. Leta ya jipi, leta ya jafoni ya mene kusema zesa zoipa. Leta za zoipa, 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 Lena ambaye mungu kwa zaidi kwa azadi pasa zonze kama ni kusuli sisi ni kwenye madhara ya sherehe kusakira azadi pasa. The last few months, I was researching on YouTube about water. Now, I sent some videos to Mama Dalia about water. Even my family in America, we were sitting. I was sending them videos, and they started thinking I was crazy because I was sending them videos about water, the importance of drinking water. So, anyways, I discovered some things. And I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but just listen to me, okay? I know you're going to think I'm crazy. My family started looking at me like I was crazy. Mama Dahlia is looking at me like I was crazy. But listen, I was researching videos about water. Did you know? And by the way, whatever I say right now may not be true. But just listen to me anyway, okay? Just listen to me anyway. So, I started researching about water, and I discovered the Japanese. They drink four cups of water first thing in the morning. And it prevents all kinds of diseases. Did you guys know that? Four cups of water in the morning, first thing in the morning. Okay? I know you're looking at me like I'm strange. Listen, don't just listen. There's a point to this whole thing. Now, if you drink four cups of water in the morning, you can be, prevent a lot of diseases. By the way, did you know that when you drink water at room temperature and not cold, it's better for you? Did you know that? Room temperature water. I know you're saying, Abuna, please finish the sermon. Just listen, just listen, just listen. Okay? Did you know that if you drink water sitting down, it's better than standing up? I know, just listen. Just, just, I know it's getting crazy in here now in the church. But just listen. Did you know if you drink water from a copper tin, it's better than like plastic or glass? The copper one. Did you know that? I know, Abuna, what are you talking about? So anyways, did you know when you drink water, drinking slowly is better than gulping water, like taking all at once. Did you know that? Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? So water is important. And if you do like what I said, I don't know what will happen. <laughs> but I do know this. I know water is important. And everyone should drink water. Now everything I said, I don't know if that's true or not, but I did watch that on videos, and I can send you those videos if you like to. And I've, by the way, I've been trying these things, and it's, it feels good, but anyways, that's another story. I know water is important, but how much more is the living water important? I joked about the water, but I can't joke about the living water. Living water is critical. If we're not drinking living water every day, if we're not letting this fountain flow, it's risky for all of us. We're never going to go anywhere in life. And it says here in verse 14, the water springs up into everlasting life. What I'm saying to you today is, let's open that fountain. If it means taking communion, or doing confession, or reading the Bible every day, or doing your prayers, or attending midnight praises, or opening your Agbeya prayer book, or whatever, don't say, I don't like those things, they're boring. No, those things are opening the fountain and that's when you'll finally feel forgiven and finally feel love maybe your family problems can be healed maybe your personal problems can be healed maybe there's lust that can be healed maybe your situation can be healed if the fountain is going strong let's pray for that today yes I want us to have this living water the Samaritan woman had God may say to you go call your husband go get your you fill in the blank he may say that today but at last you should know the importance of why you're here at church today you're meeting 
the living water. You're opening the fountain for living water to pour inside of you and to change us, to grow us, to bless us, to heal us. I hope everyone is listening in the church today. I hope you're listening right now. You're here today at the well meeting Jesus Christ. Now, if you say to him today, I need this water, he will give it to you. But he may ask you to stop something. He may ask you to go get something that he wants to remove. He may do that. It's not bad news, that's good news. But at last, the importance of the living water, it's risky not to read your Bible. It's risky not to pray. It's risky not to take Holy Communion. It's risky to not live a life of repentance and confession. It's risky. Don't risk your life. You would never go jump in front of a car outside. That's risky, right? Don't go. You would never let your children go play on the roadside, on the road. Never. It's risky that you turn off the fountain and keep it off. Let's pray today. When you say to, to Jesus, I want that water, whatever he tells you to do next, Whatever he says to do next, you do it. I do it. And we're going to see the water springing up to ever, fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. God wants to take you higher today. God wants to take us higher today. Let's pray for that. My sin, your sin, I think we can be ready to give it up today. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to keep that sin. It's so worth it for the fountain to be on. Maybe you've never experienced a fountain on. You've experienced the Holy Spirit. We had a beautiful baptism this morning. And after baptism, the baby received the Holy Spirit. What a great day. You received that a long time ago. But maybe the fountain has been off for many years. Time to turn it on. Turn it on today. When you ask for that living water, be ready to do what He says. Let's pray for one another. Glory be to God forever. Amen. Abuso wa pasa na kusando Pana wangu sakila Kale ya manzi Pamina na wangu sakila Kuziwa manzi Nichancha mene ya kuchita Atuwa na kuzila ti 